Hello! This is Way of Weinstein, wherever you may be and however you may be watching, live in the financial district of New York City, Facebook Live and YouTube. Here to do my review of Ant-Man and the Wasp. And just to warn you, this does have spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, just make sure to watch it later. You can watch it either on here or on YouTube at Way of Weinstein. And we're going to get going in 3, 2, 1. Okay, so overall, I feel like this was a lot of a palate cleanse from Infinity War. It was very, very lighthearted. I mean, so Ant-Man's on, on house arrest. And essentially the whole movie is about getting it. Jan and Van Dyme out of the quantum realm and and for that I mean not every movie can be about saving the world a mad titan who has the power to wipe out everything with his snap of his fingers and I like the plot I thought I thought Paul Rudd as Ant-Man was great he was heartfelt when he needed to be he was hysterical when he needed to be I really liked his interactions specifically with with his daughter Cassie and I thought the relationship with him and eventually his wasp was great and and the scenes when he would get big and small and he would and he was uh, a kid uh, that that was great when he was in the school saying eventually was, was saying of only could cat app could see you now so re really enjoyed that uh, wasp I thought she was kind of the the standout of of the movie, I mean, eventually Lily just crushed it. She was great. I mean, her combat style was amazing. Because when you look at the first Ant Man, she was really supposed to be the one to break in and complete the mission. The whole reason they got Scott was because he was the one that was expendable. So and then Doctor Doctor Hank Pym and. He was, I mean, I like him. I mean, granted, they have to clean him up from the comics, but he was a wife beater and just not a good person in the comics. So they have to, like, even though he's gruff, they have to clean him up. And Jet and Van Dyming, mean, she was barely in the movie. I mean, it was nice when when he finally found her in the quantum realm, and then he, then she cures ghosts by just touching her her head. And now. Speaking of Ghost, so Ghost was kind of a weak villain. I mean, anyone coming off of Thanos would be, be a weak villain. I mean, granted, we've had a lot of great villains in the past couple Marvel movies, whether that be Thanos, Killmonger, Hela. I mean, those those three right there, I mean, might be are definitely in my top five of all time uh, Marvel MCU villains. But I don't know. I mean. She, cause, I don't know if she really was a villain, cause she was just someone that just really wanted to get, get better. And even when Lawrence Fishburne's character, Bill, Doctor Bill Foster, was like, "If you go after them, I'm not, go I'm not gonna help you," and she was like, "Yeah, all right, you're right." So, yeah, she was, she was okay. I mean, uh, Louise, he was hysterical the way he does his, his format of telling stories and how. Kurt and Dave like once you put uh, ten cent, ten cents in it, you gotta hear the whole thing. That was great. Uh, Ti is Ti is Dave. I mean, he was I mean, he had a small role, but I feel like he did well. Same thing uh, with Kurt with his Baba Yaga. That was funny throughout the whole thing. Now, Jimmy Wu. I mean, he was kind of a bumbling idiot for like kind of the whole movie. Like how every, he's supposed to be this. This is a huge law enforcement director, and every single time when he tries to catch Scott when he's not when he's out of the house and everyone knows he's out but he just can't catch him. Which nah, Sonny Birch now now that's Wal the Walter Goggins character. Now I've never seen Vice Principals or really enjoyed anything he's done, but a lot of people that I watch on YouTube or just watch just say he's a great actor. I'll take their word for it. I mean, he was kind of, it was kind of annoying, and it was kind of there just to, to move the plot along, and 
Bill Foster. I mean, other than the dynamic of talking about Goliath when he used to be 21 feet, I mean, it's almost that since Lawrence Fishburne's on Blackish, which is also under the under the Disney umbrella, and so is Marvel. It's kind of like, hey, I want to be in a Marvel movie. And I thought that Cassie, Ant-Man's daughter, I feel like she really improved from the first one, where I thought it was just a, no a novelty for her to be the daughter, but her suggesting that she wants to fight crime, she, she wanted to be the partner. Oh, get out of here, Tyler. You and your erroneous comments, DCEU. They, they lost money. Every film. Justice League made less than Doctor Strange. Alright, now you're just trolling. Alright, so... So, overall... So, there are three tiers of Marvel movies I have. Not including the first Avengers in 2012, because I just love that movie. But not including that you have the meh tier, which is a couple movies in that. Thor The Dark World... Iron Man 3 and Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and the Edward Norton Hulk where I'm just like eh, I still somewhat enjoy because it it's a Marvel movie but nah. then you have the middle tier which is movies that I really I really like but it's nothing that it's nothing that was was great so so in a way kind of like the the first Captain America the first the first Thor the the first Ant-Man stuff that I that that I really like, but just wasn't that. Oh my God, that that was amazing. So, but th now in that upper class, that you got the the Avengers movie, you got Thanos and in Infinity War, Civil War, Winter Soldier, Black Panther. So, it's it's a middle tier, but at how it ends with with essentially. You think that at Janet and Hank or are going to be, be living happy ever after because they have that house on the island, and then we go to the go to the post credit scene. Now, for those that haven't watched Infinity War, I don't know why you haven't, but I'm going to be spoiling Infinity War right now. So Tyler, I'm not sure if you've seen Infinity War, but if you haven't, uh. T tune away thanks for watching so how the whole uh snapshot dusting where we lose half the characters so when they send scott to like a miniaturized uh, quantum realm in the in the van and he's asking to be pulled out like what guys where are they so we see like, dr hank pym Jan janet van dyne and and wasp all just materialized to dust so that Saying that it ends with, at the same time as Infinity War did. Now I'm curious to see like how he gets out of the quantum realm, if he does. Which you gotta figure he does. And at this point, anyone who was turned to dust is coming back in Avengers Four. That's that's happening. There's no way they're staying dead. Marvel's not gonna like forego billions upon billions of dollars. Now the second end credit scene was. In my opinion, probably the worst end credit scene by Marvel is an absolute waste, and it wasn't even funny. Like in Spider-Man: Homecoming, when we had Captain America talking about patience was a virtue, even if it doesn't lead to anything, that was at least funny. I mean, with this, I didn't enjoy it. It was literally just the ant playing uh, on the on the drum on the drums, which man, eh, there was no point. And also, they showed that in the trailer. Paul Rudd enters out of the quantum realm and appears in Clueless. Yeah, Paul Rudd is like, Paul Rudd doesn't age. I mean, he's almost 50, and there are people that look 30 that, that look older than him. So, yeah, Paul, Paul Rudd could literally sell a de-aging cream of, of a general just cream that costs $4 and probably mark it up for 50 bucks. But, but overall, I mean, the next Marvel movie that we do have is Captain Marvel. Which, which, Brie Larson said on Twitter that she just finished shooting for that. So I'm excited for that in March, and then in, and then in, then in Infinity War, that's gonna Infinity War, Part Two or Avengers Four, that's gonna be in May of 2019, and then after that, we have either Spider-Man 
Far From Home, Homecoming 2, whatever it's going to be called, two months after in Infinity War 2. So Iron Man Person 2021, 20, I have no idea what he's talking about. But, oh yeah, overall, liked it. Wasn't, wasn't great. I would rate it as a tier 2 Marvel movie. If you like this video, like it, share it, put a comment, and if you haven't already done so, subscribe to me on YouTube, which is Way of Weinstein. Have a great day.